Hey everybody, thanks for coming back. So recently I played cornhole for the very first time and I gotta admit, it's pretty dang fun. So I had to build a couple of cornhole boards for myself, but I did notice the, the boards I was playing on had a couple of issues that I figured I could fix with mine. Let's check it out. And one of the things I felt it needed was some integrated bag storage. And the other thing was an integrated drink holder because everybody was either trying to play with it in their hand, you can imagine how well that went, or they were running around trying to figure out where to put it and then they kept forgetting about it or it would just tip over in the grass. Problem solved. So that's the cornhole boards today. Let's go back in time and I'll show you how I built them. Okay, so the material selection for my cornhole boards is pretty simple. The body itself is going to be made out of some Craftsman Pine 1x4s because it's about as straight and defect free as you're going to find for pine boards. And the tops themselves are going to be made out of half inch birch plywood that measure 2 feet by 4 feet. And that's so when the entire thing is assembled, it's going to be 4 inches tall, which is regulation height. After cutting a little bit off of each end of the boards just to get nice fresh wood because it's usually kind of beaten up after sitting in the racks, we can start measuring and cutting everything to length. Now for my cornhole boards, I'm shooting to have about a quarter inch overhang of the top to the frame. This isn't necessary, I just like the way it looks. So, But after that, I'm going to have four cross braces that run throughout the center of it and those are going to be my shorter ones. And the entire thing is going to be pocket holes screwed together for simplicity. After drilling two pocket holes in the ends of all of our short boards, we can go ahead and reset our jig for half inch stock material. And this is because we're going to be drilling some vertical pieces now through all of our frame to attach the top. And remember that top's half inch. If you don't do this, when you go to screw it on, all your screws are going to be coming through the top. And I almost forgot about that, which is why I'm reminding you. Because all our joints are going to be end grain joints and they're inherently weak, they suck up all of the glue, I'm going to apply a sizing. That's nothing more than a little bit of glue on the end grain of all the boards that get screws and push it into the end grain fibers and let it dry for a couple of minutes. Then you can apply the actual glue for the joint itself. Now I'm also using clamps to hold everything together because pocket holes inevitably want to slide around a lot and I'm not over tightening the screws. This way it keeps everything in perfect alignment. For my cross braces, I'm adding them so they have even spacing throughout the entire thing. And one last thing to keep an eye on is make sure that your pocket holes to hold the top on are all facing the same direction. You don't want to come back later to have to put the top on and realize one of your boards is upside down. Now the center section is where our bags are going to be stored. Now I'm making these out of a 1x3, that way I have enough height for a little plywood lid to go on them later on. Now I'm also spacing them 12 inches apart so I can have two bags laying side by side and I'm orienting them in the frame so that way they're against the plywood top later on. Now when it came to joining the frame and the top together, I glued and screwed mine together, but in hindsight, I don't know if I would glue it next time if I was to rebuild these. It's just for repairability's sake, as the top gets beaten up, if it's not glued on, I could just unscrew it and put a new top on. But then at that point, the frame might be also getting beaten up too, so I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Now we need to add a hole so somebody can score. Wow, that sounded awesome. I'm leaving it in. Anyway, it's 9 inches down from the top, centered in the board, and it's a 6 inch hole. Now, I bought this hole saw online. I'll have a link to it down below. Now, this 6 inch hole saw has a ton of torque. If it grabs and bites the wood, it can kick pretty hard. Now I'm starting my cut on the top and I'm finishing it out through the bottom. This way it cuts all the wood fibers on the top and bottom so there's less chance for tear out, especially in plywood. Now like I said, this thing has a ton of torque so you gotta make sure that you have a good grip on it because this can happen. But I came out of that one okay, did nothing hurt so <laughs> after a little bit of cleanup with some hand sandpaper, we can go ahead and take a quarter inch round over bit to the entire edges of the top as well as the hole itself. When it comes to our legs, I'm using 2x4s, and I found the nicest one that I could possibly find. It's still a 2x4, but we can clean it up. Now I'm going to measure down and side to side an inch and three quarters, and this will be the center of where my through bolt is going to go to hold the leg to the body. 
I'm going to take a compass a little bit smaller than an inch and three quarters, a little bit bigger than an inch and five eighths, somewhere in there anyway, so it doesn't run off the board. And that's going to make my round over for me. Now this cut's going to be ugly, but we can clean that up with the sander later. And then we're going to drill our hole now. I'm using a three eighths inch bolt, so that's the size of the hole that I drilled. Now typically the legs are pretty vertical on these, but however, mine need to be at a bit of an angle. That way the drink holder clears the frame if you got a tall bottle in there. So to do that, I'm putting a three quarter inch spacer block up at the top to push the leg down. That way when I flip the legs out, they can go more of an angle. Now for hardware, like I said, I'm using three eighths inch hardware and I'm putting a washer in between the leg and the frame. Now this is just so there's less wood and wood binding. And on the other side, it's a washer, a lock washer and a nut, and I'm not tightening it down like crazy just enough that the lock washer crushes flat. And as you can see, it still works perfectly. I'm also not chiseling out the square neck from the carriage bolt because it's softwood. And as you can see, it just crushes its way through there. So there's no point. Now this leg, however, had a bit of binding to it. You can see it wants to move the entire board. So don't be afraid to fine tune things until they work smoothly. With the legs working smoothly, now we can get the angle cut on the bottom of them. And that's going to be tricky to figure out, but an easy way to do it is the cornhole board needs to be a 12 inches at the very back of it for regulation height. So a paint can and a piece of quarter inch plywood work perfectly. With the leg overhanging a table, or in my case the deck, you can go ahead and mark the bottom of it, and that's the exact angle you need. Now it's time to move on to what some people might call the most important part, the drink holder. Now, I cut my board a little bit shorter than the measurement that I took, so it pulled the bottoms of the legs in just a little bit to, so there's less chance of binding. I measured in five and a half inches, and I'm using a three inch hole saw. Now, I had to keep stopping because the wood was literally burning to the teeth and would stop it from cutting. I've also got the drill pushing against my legs, so that way there's less chance of ripping my arm off because I'm using my body to brace, and then just like before, start the cut on one side, stop and then finish it on the other. Now, no matter how much I try, there was some chatter out of the saw blade teeth and it did gouge the wood a little bit. So I took some black Starbond CA glue and I filled all of those voids. I also set some of the knots on it and one of the boards also had a giant split running through it and I filled that in as well. So I kind of had some nice accent pieces. Now you could do this with epoxy, but it takes forever to dry. This stuff literally dries in seconds and I can keep on working. After a bit of cleanup, it looks awesome. So if you guys want some of this stuff, I've got a discount code down below. Check it out. After cleaning up the openings and the leading edge with the same quarter inch router bit as before, we can attach the drink holder to the legs. Now, this part was kind of awkward, and if anybody has a better idea, let me know down in the comments. I used the angle block from the cutoff of the feet to space it up an inch and a half. Then I would slide the leg so the back corner was flush of the drink holder and the leg, and I could see the one pocket hole. Now then I would have to flip the block around so that way I could see the other pocket hole and I would have to pull the leg in towards it, clamp the entire thing down, and then finish screwing it together. So it was kind of awkward, but it worked, I guess. Now the last thing we got to do before we get on to finishing is add the lid for our bag holder. Now I've just got an eye hook here with a little spring-loaded latch to it to keep it closed and a couple of small two-inch hinges. I'm marking in and I'm going to pre-drill my holes because it is plywood if I don't do this. Even though there's small screws, it will split the wood apart. Then we can lift it up ever so slightly and I'm just going to use one of the eye hooks. This way there's no binding when I go to open the door. There's like a sixteenth of an inch gap. Now there are probably millions of different ways you could customize your cornhole boards when it comes to this finishing step here, but I'm keeping mine pretty simple. Now I just measured in seven inches from each side that left me with a 10 inch wide stripe up the center and I'm just going to stain them. Now the stain that I'm using is called Verithane Ultimate. In other parts of the world it might be called Rustolium Ultimate. And the color on this one here is called Flagstone and the other one's called Briar Smoke. And I think they turned out awesome. And then after that, I added four coats of a water-based exterior rated clear coat, sanding before the last coat.
Anyways, guys, that's a wrap for this one. It's going to do it for you. I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked the project. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. And if you feel I earned it, a thumbs up and a subscription would be amazing. Otherwise, I'll have links to everything I use down below, as well as links to some of my other plans. I don't have plans on these, although I could batch some out fairly quickly. I've already got them rendered. Let me know if you want some of those. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.